Greetings viewers, welcome back to KMI Community Connect Metabolism Made Easy Part 14. Now we are in the midst of connecting a lot of things like sodium, glucose, uric acid which comes from fructose and various mechanisms and things are getting a little bit deeper and slightly complicated for an average person to understand. So we are trying to repeat this more and more number of times for getting you to understand mechanistically what happens. Why is this important? Because it is all about the state of the body uh, which leads to a consequence. It is not about treating that consequence but understanding where your state of the body is. So a lot of times we treat each symptom that we measure with different medications when those symptoms are in turn actually connected like how we connected last time I talked about salt we always say it's low salt that leads to hypertension and we don't connect salt to how it makes fat or how it makes sugar like I explained when there is dehydration the salt um, actually increases in the body with dehydration and then converts our own glucose to fructose and makes fat. So last time I have actually kind of uh, not forgotten but kind of missed putting something here which is fat because now we are also bringing in the concept of fat here and the sodium can make through uh, fructose uh, converting our own glucose um, fat. So this is actually going a circuitous pathway like that and coming and making fat. So there's a connection between salt, sugar, fat and high blood pressure. So this, these are the connections that we are trying to and that sugar is actually from uric acid which is fructose again that is connected. So now I wanted to take because of lack of place it's getting too busy and complex. I want to uh, with your permission um, slowly rub off this area because I said that this is a blood vessel last time and that is getting a signal to constrict vasopressin the blood vessel that constricts so I'm going to rub this off for the convenience and limitation of space here because I said that the brain acts on the kidney and retains water and then that's where the blood pressure goes up so I'm going to take this part out and I'm actually going to only relate this. If you see here what I'm doing, this let us assume that the high blood pressure, this is all the blood vessel. This whole thing is the blood vessel. So now I can connect this here, the vasopressin. Vasopressin acts connecting the blood pressure and then the brain is the one that produces it. So I'm going to connect it here. and. I said that the kidneys retain water by this mechanism so I'm actually going to take away the kidney thing here and then put another picture here with I, I'll write kidneys here now so we have all the organs that have this interplay and the body is working like a systems approach that it's all working together so these are the kidneys now and I also said last time that the kidneys have a big role in retaining sodium so that part again I'm going to put like this the sodium and uh, we know that the blood pressure again in turn is controlled through the kidneys through the brain and how these interconnections are happening now very important Last time I you know I also mentioned that with dehydration we make fat. Why is this important? Because fat I said is made because of a survival signal. Remember there are three important survival signals that the body perceives. That means the body is perceiving a threat. A threat which is either happening from inside or from outside. So the outside threats one of the biggest survival uh, signal is dehydration. The other survival signal is starvation and the third survival signal which is very important that we all know is oxygen. So oxygen 
Now, when there is no oxygen, obviously we all know that's a third survival signal. This can also increase the blood pressure because the body is trying to conserve and then make sure that you know it, it tries to save itself. So, why is this important? Clinically, because oxygen is uh, very important when we sleep and we commonly see that when we don't get enough oxygen when we are sleeping, we see patients coming to us with high blood pressure in the morning because the body is, uh, is not getting enough repair, enough oxygen, enough tissue repair because of lack of oxygen, because of various reasons that the mouth, uh, the tongue is falling to the back or the brain is not giving the right signal uh, to the respiratory center that's in the brain for oxygen. Uh, for receiving oxygen. So, today we are going to mostly also focus on the dehydration part again where why does, why does uh, uh, dehydration cause so much fat. So, when I say dehydration causing fat, I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, give you an example from an evolutionary point of view about something which is a camel. Uh, remember a camel is going in a desert, it does not get any water, but when it does not get any water, it still goes for miles and miles and miles without drinking water. How does that happen? Because in spite of so much heat and dehydration, if you look at the hump of the camel, it has fat, uh, that is full of fat. So, so what is this mystery? How does it not drink water, goes for thousands or hundreds of miles without drinking water and what does that fat uh, do, the hump which is almost about 80 pounds or so of the fat that is sitting on the hump of the camel. What is its role in this dehydration signal and the camel still being able to survive? So, the interesting part is like I said when we are dehydrated we make more fat. So, the camel is surviving on the fat that it has on the back because fat is nothing but why does it make so much fat? If fat is nothing but um, I will put it in different colors so that you understand carbon dioxide plus water. I will put this color differently. Um, Let us, uh, so carbon dioxide and water that is fat. So, it is, so the water when you get dehydrated, the body is changing all this glucose fructose energy into fat because it can store water and release the carbon dioxide when it needs, when you are, when it is in desert or in dehydration. Similarly, we also try to send a signal to preserve water, that is why we make fat. So, this is called metabolic water, metabolic water. That means, if you burn the fat, you get nothing but you get water, you release water vapor. So, that is called metabolic water. Similarly, a hummingbird you can give the same example, it goes miles and miles and miles and miles by drinking honey and for all its energy and all because it is the same thing but when it drinks sugars and fructose it converts. So, this is from an evolutionary perspective. Now, from a human perspective, we do the same thing but most of the time the present epidemic of obesity, hypertension, diabetes, we are giving this survival signal which is not actually needed when we have plenty of food, plenty of water by eating salty food um, and foods that are causing dehydration like drinking alcohol um, or uh, caffeine, excessive caffeine that dehydrates us. So, when we give those inappropriate signals when really we are not in a survival by eating high salty foods, caffeinated foods alcoholic foods which dehydrate us, what happens? The first thing that happens is like I told you, the osmolality increases, the concentration increases and also I told you the other mechanism where the fruct body converts its own glucose to fructose because it wants to store this metabolic water and making fat. So, this is the complex mechanism. Why am I telling you all this? Because the only point that is driving here is make sure you are not dehydrated whenever you eat 
or whenever you are doing any foods that make you dehydrated which give those signals the point the driving point is it is the state of the body that you need to address rather than giving medications for the consequences that happen uh, around by giving all these med uh, by giving various medications for various symptoms that we address high sugar high blood pressure and all this these are all related these are all happening because the body is working like a system it's a systems approach so for you to know the more you are the more you know about this the more you can help and talk to your own physicians about am i checking this am i uh, getting enough oxygen when i'm sleeping am i hydrated am i not dehydrated am i eating or drinking any foods that is making me dehydrated in the process what happens everything goes up the sodium goes up blood urea nitrogen which makes fructose urea nitrogen uric acid goes up and glucose goes up for instance when people come to us and um, they are dehydrated their glucose can easily go up to 5 to 10 or even 15 points in some people more when they are fasting and we we'll get a blood test similarly blood urea nitrogen can go up and then convert to fructose sodium can go up like i told you so all these numbers are all a question of being hydrated properly the other part is the starvation signal that we give by eating certain sugary foods and all and then giving that signal that we are starving in spite of having so much food around so the third part which is very important now is i'm going to bring in one more connecting link for uh, there now now there are lots of things that matter for blood pressure so i'm going to talk about the next important thing like salt and sugar is nitric oxide now nitric oxide is something that's very important in uh, in our system that is generated in the blood blood vessel for helping us to keep the blood vessel open and dilated that means nitric oxide is is uh, is like it it dilates the blood vessel and helps the blood vessel to improve the blood supply to the organs it happens in all the big arteries smaller arteries even smaller arteries and the capillaries so the nitric oxide is like making the blood vessel big big to improve the blood flow now this is very closely connected why because nitric oxide if you if there's a problem with the quality of nitric oxide or the quantity the quality of nitric oxide uh, is affected through fructose which is through uric acid and that in turn affects the blood pressure so if you have less nitric oxide that means if you make less nitric oxide the blood vessels become very stiff they don't dilate and the blood pressure increases and if you have more nitric oxide the blood vessels dilate and the blood pressure decreases where is the nitric oxide made the nitric oxide is made inside the blood vessel cells itself if you think that these are the cells inside the blood vessels see those cells make nitric oxide and anything that affects the nitric oxide production is actually affecting the cells itself so now fructose what it does from uric acid actually through uric acid what it does is it directly negates or inhibits the it inhibits i am putting a negative sign here it it interferes with the quality of production of nitric oxide in these cells and thereby the blood pressure increases that's one kind the other part is fructose also through uric acid again everything that happens with the fructose is through uric acid again this is very important now the third point is it actually makes it decreases the insulin action the insulin is one of the mediators for making fat generation increasing glucose and also in increasing blood pressure i'll come to that and tell you how it happens but it decreases the effect of insulin on the cell which means the cell is not going to be responding well so th that is when you get insulin resistance
Now, I'm going to stop this here because this is a big topic about how insulin resistance affects in turn blood pressure and all. I will come back to that later. So I have added, we already talked about salt, sugar, fructose, which is all the sugary foods or the sugar that gets converted to fructose in our body through uric acid. And again, how dehydration, which triggers all these mechanisms, uh, causes high sugars, of course, fat, but mostly high blood pressure. And again, we are also, we also talked about how insulin is coming into the picture and how uric acid interferes with nitric oxide, making less nitric oxide and increasing the blood pressure. And also uric acid affecting insulin, insulin and causing insulin resistance. So I will come back and talk about how, because this is a separate topic by itself, how it affects the blood pressure and causes diabetes and all. I will mention this in my next topic. So I hope you understood. So the take home points are two things. One is have enough oxygen, be hydrated, try to make sure that you're not giving a starvation signal unnecessarily by eating sugary drinks and sugary foods or giving a dehydration signal. And these are the mechanisms. That is why I try to connect everything instead of understanding everything separately like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high sugar, and these kind of uh, different names and terminology. Because we've got into the habit of naming it, blaming it, and taming it with every, every different symptom with different medications. Uh, overwhelming majority of the people that have high insulin resistance don't know about it. That's what I'm going to talk next and majority of them have hypertension either transiently without they knowing high blood pressure and then develop diabetes later insulin resistance happens first and they don't know about it and in before insulin resistance high insulin happens so that part like i spoke about in the previous topics about repeated glucose stimulation high insulins and all i'm going to talk uh, in my next topic in metabolism made is uh, easy part 15. I hope you are able to connect this well and we will be looking forward to seeing you very soon on metabolism made easy part 15 to discuss more about how this connection with insulin resistance, fructose and uh, nitric oxide and all happens. Thank you very much. I hope to see you soon.